So what are you going to learn in this lab? What, what is the point? Well, first off, conducting laboratory experiments at home related to the content of this course, quantum mechanics, electricity, magnetism, optics, is just not feasible without requiring you to purchase some expensive lab kit. And given the financial stresses that so many students are under, stresses that are exacerbated by the pandemic, I am unwilling to add this additional cost upon you. Fortunately, the benefit provided by lab to conceptual understanding of physics, as measured by exam performance, has been shown to be statistically consistent with zero, although the error bars are large. Instead, I want this lab to focus on skills identified by the American Association of Physics Teachers as being valuable goals for the laboratory experience, one of which is learning to apply more sophisticated data analysis techniques. For example, in prior lab courses, you probably use significant figures to represent and propagate uncertainty in measured values. You have also probably fit data to a line. In this class, we will learn more sophisticated ways of doing these same types of things. We will use measured uncertainty to determine how to represent our numbers and the far more powerful Monte Carlo technique to propagate those uncertainties. Moreover, we will learn how to incorporate uncertainties into our lines of best fit. Each lab will build on the data analysis techniques of prior labs so that by the end of the lab sequence, you have developed a full analysis, ch analysis chain. Moreover, we will learn how to do these analyses in a spreadsheet. We will use Google Sheets, although many of the commands work just as well in Excel. Spreadsheet skills are an incredibly important skill to have in almost all fields of scientific work and other work as well. And after this class, you can put on your resume that you actually have some intermediate proficiency with Excel and Google Sheets. So that's something you can put on your resume as having taken away from this lab. The second goal of this lab that we will focus on is designing experiments and critically thinking about and refining your procedures. In your prior lab experiences, you were probably given step-by-step -step instructions and expected to find a particular result. You may even have been penalized if your result did not match the true value. That is not, and I reiterate, not how this lab will be run. In this lab, you will be given a broad goal, and some basic information, and some analysis techniques. From there, you will be expected to figure out the details of your procedure. As such, your measurements might be wildly wrong from the quote unquote true value. I cannot emphasize enough that this is okay. It is better than okay. It's expected, you're developing your own procedure and figuring out how it works. And this is a key part of what we're trying to do. In real science, you don't know the right answer. And I can tell you from experience that things never work right the first time. There are always unexplained anomalies to figure out. For example, during the third year of my PhD, I spent two very long weeks trying to figure out the discrepancy between data and what we expected from theory. As you can see in this plot, the ultimate cause was frankly a little silly. It was just a difference as to which electrons were being included in two different calculations. So the moral is that sometimes anomalies can be subtle and in retrospect seem silly or stupid. In this lab, you might run into such anomalies and that's okay you are seeing how real science is done. Science is hard and it's frustrating. Designing and critically refining your own procedure is a very challenging task. Due to this difficulty, the experiments will actually be rather simple. I want you to be able to fully understand what is going on without any understanding of equipment getting in the way. This challenge is also why I am asking that you attend lab synchronously so that you can experience this frustration with the support of your peers and the graduate student TAs. So you might be asking yourself, if I'm not graded on getting the right number, then what am I being graded on? 
in the lab portion of this course, you are being graded on three things. Correctly implementing the analysis procedures that you are learning. Two, critically thinking about the sources of error and uncertainty in your procedure and experiments that you have developed. And three, working well with your analysis teams. Let's look a little bit more about what you will need for this lab and how each experiment will work. 